L'Hopital's Rule, Part 3. Uh, I might advise the calculus student that this is a very important topic in calculus for many reasons. One, it's useful for finding many kinds of limits that you haven't been able to find before. And the other reason is, is you use just about every skill you've learned in your first uh, semester of calculus to, to work through these problems. And I advise you to work through 50 or 60 of these L'Hopital uh, L'Hopital's rule problems in your book and even the even ones can be checked by with a calculator so this is no problem you can find the answers to see if you're right now example the limit of the sine of x to the x power as x heads to uh, 0 from the right uh, well we plug in 0 and I get a 0 here and I get 0 here so it would appear that the, the limit of this is 0 to the 0 power the only problem with that is is, is this this the function here wants to get smaller and smaller and this wants to turn the function into 1 because anything to the 0 power is, in one, is 1. So we have a conflict of interest between the power and the function here. And the way we handle these kinds of problems where you have f to the power of g of x is you write it as e to the log of sine of x to the x. Now we know that these uh, th these are inverse of each other, e, e to the x and log of x. So this this will always cancel out down to sine of x to the x. So there's no difference in this expression and this expression. But uh, what we can do is we can say, OK, uh, we can bring the exponent out front, x log sine of x. And then we're only concerned with the exponent now up here. Wherever that goes, that's where the original function, log of sine of x to the x, goes. Okay, So um, we, we found the answer. In other words, if we can find out where this exponent goes. So I'm writing e to what power? We don't know yet. We have to do an aside here. And here's the aside. We just have to find out where this goes. And then when we find that number, we can put it up here. The problem is, though, that this is 0 times infinity. And these two are in conflict, aren't they? Uh, this goes to 0. This goes to infinity. Because as the sign goes to 0, the uh, log goes to negative infinity. I probably should write a uh, written negative infinity right there, right? Times negative infinity. Maybe put a parenthesis around it just to make it look good. OK. Anyway. Um, this is an indeterminate form. And the way we handle this is we usually put one of these on the bottom as a reciprocal. And the x uh, is usually the easiest one. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to write this as the log of sine of x over 1 over x. Okay. Now, when I go to 0, I'll have infinity here, negative infinity here, and positive infinity here, or infinity over infinity, which I can use L'Hopital's rule again for. And when I do that, I get of course, uh, the log of u is u prime over u, right? So cosine over sine x. And down here, I get uh, negative 1 over x squared when I take the derivative, of the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Now, as I head to 0, uh, well, I'm going to simplify this, I think, a little bit. And here it is. But as I head to 0, I get 0 on the top and 0 on the bottom. So I'll use L'Hopital's rule again. I'll have to use a product rule there, won't I? I gotta forget, don't forget my signs here, but x squared times the derivative of the cosine, negative sine x, plus uh, uh, the cosine of x times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Now I'm going to try and plug in 0. And what do I get? Well, I'll get 0 here. I'll get 0 here. But on the bottom, um, bottom I'm going to get 1. So I get negative 0 plus 0 over 1, which is 0. Now, this is not the limit of my original expression. I have to go back up here. Here it is. And look at this thing here. Now remember, the limit of the sine of x to the x power is the limit of e to the log of sine of x to the x power, which we find equals e to some power. And now we know the power. The power is 0. And this equals 1. So the answer is 1.